chakra. Realizing I'm still alive. Interesting, interesting data here. Now let's compare that with the multiple program participants. And you can really see you know, a number of different characteristics in the language. I'm a very different person, much more whole than before. TMI helped me heal when I was very bruised. I will always be grateful. Having confidence in myself to dance with others. One part of our purpose here on Earth, or one way to look at it, is to enable God to experience the physical. In my case, hear and enjoy music. Realize that I failed to follow my guidance if I was afraid of possible consequences. Learning to love and trust myself, letting go of shame. Now, language here betrays a degree of integration, of an understanding of how their life has changed and how they are living in accordance with that change. That's one of the things that I'm taking away from this to explain why they feel more life satisfaction and greater self-efficacy. Right. Now, obviously, there's some things here that I still don't understand. And one of the things that I'm uh, proposing is that there are still questions around other variables contributing to this finding. So there's a phase two of the study yet to be done. But there's also uh, a need to get other people's perspective on these people. So I'm proposing to use a multi-rater instrument in a follow-up study with 34 of these individuals. Now, th the final comment, I take this from Richard Tarnas's work on the passion of the Western mind, and I certainly saw that happening with both groups of people, is the way in which we focus on the world, our intentions we bring to the world, the world opens up and begins to ratify that experience for us. So with that, I kind of conclude my presentation, open it up to any kind of questions, because I've covered a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm, uh, ten I tend to be slightly suspicious of self-reportage in psychological studies. I, I don't mean to be too cynical, but isn't it possible that some of this effect is simply due to self-suggestion and self-selection? In other words, people that go through multiple programs are, one, one example would be that they would be, uh, mm -hmm. tend to be motivated to, to, um, feel uh, that they had to change in response to spending all that money, uh, that it wasn't a, that it wasn't a, a, uh, a waste, mm -hmm. and, uh, and to justify it to a, even on a questionnaire. But of course, I assume these people were anonymous, so, so there was no ego issue there. Okay. So anyway, I think that there could be other, fun, other factors that caused uh, those results. Sure. And I, and I don't disagree. I, really what's coming across here is an attitude. I don't really know if they're happier, right? but you certainly get from their responses a clear indication, particularly when you do the uh, analysis, that there's statistically a, a difference. Now what explains that? That's something I, I would like to get into a deeper understanding of. Okay? So I agree. There could be other factors here. Yeah, um, my question was similar to his in terms of a self-selection effect. I guess the other question is, is that do you have any pre-data? So do we, we don't know how much gain may have occurred. No, we don't have a baseline. And this is one of the things I've told the folks at TMI. You need to start collecting data on people as they're coming in so you know something about you know, what you are trying to evaluate in terms of long-term effect. And they haven't begun to do that yet. I know in the beginning that Monroe Institute um, had all these frequencies to help people get out of their bodies. Did you even ask people about were they getting out of their bodies more? Or has the whole focus of the institute changed? No. Um, what you didn't see up there was what I call the mystical experience. And a number of, and what's really interesting here is you would think that that would be the, probably the number one area of memorable experience. And actually, it isn't. Uh, and in fact, among this group, I don't think that there's more than a handful of people who even spoke of out-of-body experience. But they spoke of a, a wide range of what I'd call metanormal 
functioning. The experiences themselves enter different uh, influences, uh, experiencing themselves transported in time, speaking with their, their, uh, their relatives outside of time, soul retrieval, a number of various uh, activities that are very much at the heart of what Monroe does. But uh, by and large, the large majority was around personal learning and development and what I'm calling belonging. Their relationship to others was more memorable than some of those experiences. That, I thought, found that interesting. Um, I had a question about uh, the uh, two populations. Did yeah. you control for the amount of meditation in the two populations? And that was one of the questions I didn't ask. Uh, oh. Is, is like, asking. what other work are you doing? All right. And that's one of the things I'm going to go into in greater detail in the, in the, in the next phase of the study. We have one more. Okay. I just like to comment and, and ask a question. My sense is that the particular technique, the induction, uh, that you're studying could be is interchangeable with. You could make quite a list of other programs of self-development and personal change, and you would find in in all these cases a, a moment of initiation or kicking open the door or some kind of blast off experience. And then you would find long periods of sustained development which are making exactly the kind of mature, integrated human beings uh, to come forth. And, and so what I, what I really appreciate is, is the, the joining of this technology with tr spiritual traditions and right. many others. Right. Um, and I, I, the more data we have of, of yeah. Each and every one of these, the better. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and, and let me just simply add, there was another reason for why uh, uh, Skip Atwater wanted us to do this study, was also to look at why not more people were coming back. There was, seemed to be about a 36-month period of time from the initial uh, uh, finding out about Monroe until the interest began to wane. And that was one of the things that we were looking at as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh.